Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as base of our message into our epistle lesson from Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 25a. Dear friends in Christ, you may remember this story from a few years back. There was a young stockbroker that worked for a firm that made a lot of shady deals. He warned them of this. But at the same time, he quietly sent out resumes looking for another job. He soon joined another company at a lower salary and with a lateral move. When asked why, he responded, I just got tired of polishing the brass on the Titanic. And sure enough, a few years later, his old company sank. Now that expression, I just got tired of polishing the brass on the Titanic, is a metaphor for any futile effort. After 20 years as a loyal subscriber, I got tired of fighting with our local paper over subscription rates that I finally canceled. How about trying to get the doctor to return your phone calls? Fighting the political system in Illinois? Or even battles with family members that get us nowhere that we just give up. It's futile. It wastes our time and emotions. In today's epistle lesson, St. Paul describes the futility of trying to achieve a good standing before God. I want to do what is right and good, but I keep doing that which is evil. And sinful. I am a wretched person and I continue on this treadmill of behavior. What's the use of trying to do the right thing? We want to know that I'm not just engaged in futility. Now, does St. Paul's experience parallel your own? You are counting on your good behavior to get you right with God. It's futile. It's like polishing the brass on the Titanic. Two brothers were wrestling with each other, and one pinned the other and panted, Now confess, you're in bondage to sin, and you cannot free yourself. Proving that the brothers must have been Luther. We cannot free ourselves. We are at war within ourselves. We see good and evil raging around us in society, but it also rages in our hearts and our minds. We have all been guilty of some horrible thoughts these last few months. We've made judgments that have been wrong. We've questioned authority. We've whined about things that make no difference to our spiritual life. You may even pray to stop this behavior. But Satan slips right back in and he comes up in the back of your shirt and he gets into your mind and you continue this cesspool of bad thoughts. You see, what we want and what God wants don't always agree. And this is where conflict happens. What God wants usually comes in second place. In this time of upheaval as Christians, we need to stay above the fray. We need to count our blessings and lean on our faith. Instead, we start to look at people differently. They're no longer children of God, but misinformed malcontents. We need to use the Lord's words, but instead we pop off with our great wisdom. What 
wretched people we are. Who will rescue us from this body of death? St. Paul had a quick answer. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He didn't stop there. He filled his letters to the church in Rome with all manner of comforting words and uplifting thoughts. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, he is certainly powerful enough to deliver me from sin that infects my body and soul. In faith, Jesus lives in me. In faith, Jesus lives in you. This power is my sin or your sin. This Spirit of God has made us baptized children of the Most High. He lives in us through our baptism and every day thereafter. His presence comes in His body and blood each time I'm privileged to enter His altar. He's renewing His presence within us right now as we hear His word and trust His promise. And you see what happens is this spiritual presence then helps us overcome our judgment calls. This spiritual presence helps us to refocus so that we stop whining about what we don't have to the wonderful blessings He's given us. We stop the me, me, me chant and look to love thy neighbor as thyself. It isn't easy. Paul knew that. He was more aware than most that our standing before God is a gift, not achievement. You see, it's on the cross where Christ gained for us our standing before God. We enjoy God's love and favor because of Christ. Our faith and obedience didn't cause that. God's grace and mercy and love came upon us and made us men and women in which Christ dwells. We're not just engaged in futility. You see, this cross of Christ gives us a purpose. For some of you, you do it for your children and your grandchildren. For some of us, we glimpse it in our children and future grandchildren. And for some of you, your behavior now leads to that spouse that the Lord has waiting for you. And the children He will grant you. You see, by the power of God, we're forgiven and given this great 